Well, what's up, everybody? What's up? Welcome to another The Victory Experience podcast. These are so good. Mm -hmm. We so love chatting together about all types of stuff. Mm -hmm. You never know what we're going to talk about, how we're coming, which way we're coming. And you never know what Pastor Aisha is going to say. She gets off the hook sometimes. You never know. Oh, I get off the hook. Okay, okay. <laughs> but we welcome you to today's podcast. If you mm. don't know who we are, I'm Bishop John. And who are you, beautiful woman? I am what you call your Victoria's Secret Model. No, Mom. you are not what yes. I call. You are a Victoria's Secret Model. Pastor Aisha Edmondson. And like I always say, we <clears throat> pastor one of the best churches on the planet. Yes, we do. One of the best because there are many best churches that is true. on the planet. <clears throat> Uh, called Victor in Christ Christian Center, located in Westville, New Jersey, Denver yes. Township, literally five oh minutes God. across the I thought bridge we were past that. from Ben Franklin, <laughs> Walt Whitman. So if you ever Whoever in did that area, for you really just messed come up. Come and check us out live. We're located at 1055 Delcy Drive, Westville, New Jersey. Why? Because a I church and live is worth the drive. <laughs> yes, it is. You have added a whole spiel. Yes. You can go on our website, www.victoryinchrist.cc, and find out what we are all about. Because we are a mighty moving church. I'm going to now. I'm not okay, going to Okay, what about the podcast? What about subscribing? You want to do that? Yes, subscribe to, to our podcast, <laughs> The Victory Experience. I love my church. Yes. I love my church. I love my church. I love my people, you know. What do I love? You love me. That's right. That's yes, right. You do. I love our church too. But <laughs> yeah, subscribe, please. Get the word out if you haven't. <clears throat> Would you share that? Like share, share, like, yeah, yep. because we talk about all types of stuff and it's really good. And um, more than just you need to hear about it. So get the word out, please. I was just telling you the other day, I said, if people really want to hear me, people say sometimes they want to hear me more. They want to hear me more. The way to hear me more is to subscribe to the podcast. Yeah, that yeah. Is how it's they your will lane. Hear me it's more. your lane. It's yes. your element. <clears throat> but mm -hmm. they also want to hear you preach. You're a great preacher. You do a great job. You're a great teacher. That's not the point. The point is it takes time, a lot more time and effort. And I'm so busy. So that, busy. that's a whole episode. Why it don't you so like preaching? Busy. I don't know. I don't, you know, I just, I just don't, <clears throat> you know, I, I think, well, no, I think it's because again of the time and the effort that it takes for me of what I feel that it takes to prepare. And I, and I'm just, I got so much other stuff on my plate that, you know, it just, it's, it's a lot of time and effort. That's flat out selfish. <laughs> <laughs> but See, no. the podcasts don't take a whole lot of time and effort. I know, it doesn't, I you know, know, and you're good at it, but I, you're just, also. It's just a, it just allows me what, what's on the inside just to come out. It's your potential. Yes. But, I, but when you teach though, I always say this, it's like you're sitting at your mother's table mm -hmm. getting wisdom. It's really mm -hmm. good. So you get ready to preach in a few weeks and we're excited about it in mm -hmm. Jesus name. Amen. But that's not right now. <clears throat> Let's dive in. Today we're talking about a very important, popular, debated topic. You see it on social media. <clears throat> you see people talking about, about this topic. Yeah. It's very popular. People say all types of stuff. People say some unwise stuff, mm -hmm. some wise stuff. The people, people, they, it's funny. They talk about this from the outside. They're not even on the inside, mm -hmm. but on the outside, what they heard, what they think. And it's so off. So we were like today, let's address church hurt. Yeah. And the way I found it, I, we ended up coming about this podcast because for, um, I was, um, on my, on the, um, um, what is it? My emails. And I saw that my sorority was doing a, a, a webinar or a seminar. What's the Sorority? Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority <laughs> Incorporated, the first, the finest sorority ever. And what's this? What's their sound? I'm their not going to do that. I'm not going to do that now because you know this mic is right in front it's of like me, ski and I or something and like I'm probably one of the <laughs> loudest and the longest people that can do That's it. That's true. So okay. I'm not going to do that. Today. All right. But anyway, they were doing. They're doing a um, seminar. On sorrow hurt, you know, because sometimes, you know, sorrow hurt, sorrow hurt. And it made me think about, you know, church hurt. Yes. You know, there are a lot of people that have left churches that stopped going to church um, because yeah. of church <clears throat> hurt. So I thought that would be a great topic for us to talk it about is. because it's interesting. We've talked about it amongst ourselves before yes. and we've dealt and with, with some people of, on and, it. and dealt with people yeah. about it and dealt with it with the leaders. But we've never talked about it, you know, publicly. So, yeah. I, so this is a really a good topic. topic, and I think there's 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 bound, <clears throat> excuse me, to be people <clears throat> listening 
Mm -hmm. that have dealt with this. Yeah. They've dealt with it, they've experienced it, they know somebody that's mm -hmm. dealt with it. So this is gonna be really good. This this applies across the board, you know, because church hurt can happen for so many reasons. Mm -hmm. And and it, it it's bound to happen. You know, it, I don't care what type of church, our church, we have a great church, people have still had church hurt. Yeah. And I think that's off the top, let's establish that. Mm -hmm. No church is exempt no from church. dishing out church hurt. Because people can get hurt for so many different reasons. So and what hurts one reasons. may not affect somebody else. But yeah. the reality is, if somebody's hurting, their hurt is real. Yeah. So this is not a defending. This is not even a debating. This is talking about the reality of church hurt. So if you're looking for us to debate, is church hurt real or not? You're going you're gonna to be disappointed because church hurt is real. In the greatest of churches, church hurt exists. So mm -hmm. this is just to inform and make aware. And how do you handle it? Yeah, and I know one of the things that we talk about, because I, I, I said a minute ago that we haven't really talked about it publicly, but we do talk about it very briefly in one form or fashion and aspect. And that's more so when people are joining the church. Yes, yes. We do say that when you join Victory, when you join our church, you got to fight to stay you there. You do, it's true. Because the enemy will come and try to use whoever and whomever 100%. to get you out yes. of your set yes. place. And many times the way that he will do that is via some type of form of church hurt. Right. And so one of the things we try to remind people of is that, and people don't think about it like that sometimes, that a church is no different than a hospital. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of people when they first come to the church, they come there and they're hurting. Right. And they come to the church to get healed. And people are not looking at that. They're just looking at coming to a church and they think, oh, there's all these Christians and everybody should be living their life the yeah, right yeah. way. Not knowing that everybody's got issues, situations, situations going on. What are issuations? <laughs> I don't know. I just thought it was a great word. There are issues and situations <laughs> issues that hook and up. Issues and situations that hook up. Yes, <laughs> yes. So, but everybody has but them. But everybody's got and yeah. and 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 sometimes there are times people don't expect certain people to hurt them, which is a whole nother topic by yeah, itself. Yeah. But because people are hurting at different times, or people just sometimes have a bad day, or don't even realize that they hurt somebody it can make somebody feel hurt and not respond the right way Correct. or possibly leave <clears throat> Correct. Um, or just be hurt by the church. But yes. if they recognize that hurt people will hurt people sometimes. And if a church is like a big hospital and people are coming to get healed, yeah. there's many times they may hurt <clears throat> people me. along the way. That's so which true. Which is why you got to know why you are healed. You're, you're, he you're here to get healed yourself Yes. so that you can be uh, victorious in all areas of your life and not focus on the people around you. That's like when you go to a hospital, you're not focused on the other people in the rooms. Right that are there to get healing yourselves. Like if somebody affects somebody in your room, I remember when my mom was in the hospital and the woman next to her was going off and freaking out, you know, it's not like she's gonna leave the hospital because the woman next to her is freaking out. Right. You're not there for that person right. that's next to you in your bed. Right. You're here, you're there to get the healing that you need so that you can walk out and be free yeah. and, and liberated. And that's gotta be the <clears throat> focus sometimes of some yeah. of the people that are coming to church. I think a mind, when you're in a hospital and somebody's, acting up your mindset is that you're, you're aware of the environment you want to get out though you yeah, do sometimes yeah. want to get out because the people are ticking off let but me get out of here as but you're as not as looking at them funny because you know <laughs> mm -hmm. they're in a hospital yeah you know you're more aware and conscious more of aware. it but in a in a church people don't think that way it, the church is a hospital or you may want to uh, uh see if i can get into another room but yeah. you're not trying to necessarily <clears throat> leave the hospital and you know in a church though you know we for some reason we think everything should be perfect, but mm -hmm. it's not because there's imperfect people yeah. that are hurting. And so, but, but the reality is wherever there's people, there's going to be hurt. Yeah. There's going to be hurt. So let, let's talk about church hurt and mm -hmm. let's talk about some areas that of church hurt, if, mm -hmm. you know, of why people get hurt because mm -hmm. they do, they get hurt. So let's talk about it. So, you know, one of them, you know, sometimes people, man, they, they feel like people judge them. They mm -hmm. feel like people criticize them. They're judged by leaders. They're judged by other people, other members in the church. Yeah. And, it, and so they turn around and somebody, you know, a leader, and this is things that happen. Mm -hmm. A leader judges them. Um, or, you know, people can assume 
You can easily assume, we've had that happen to us. People assume somebody said something, or, but it causes hurt. And you know, it causes them from sometimes getting fully engaged, whether right. it's in a ministry or in church activities, because of how they feel that somebody might have judged them, yes. might have criticized them. It, it 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 hinders them from getting what they really need. Correct. Or even being a blessing to somebody Correct. else. And you know, and people can easily judge. And you know, they judge what you wear, mm -hmm. they judge how you talk, you know, whatever the case is, but people can get hurt. You know, because they feel like somebody judged them or people mm -hmm. judged them or the leadership judged them. One of the things in churches, man, leaders, can, people cannot be nice. Mm -hmm. You know, they cannot be nice. And, you know, I mean, sometimes, you know, people, you know, um, but I think you got to be careful with it because like here, you know, we have a lot of people here. The ushers are working the floors and the ushers can be asking people to move over. And somebody gets upset because, you know, you asked me to move over and mm -hmm. or you want to sit a certain place. And the usher says, no, you, you know, you can't sit there for whatever reason. And people get mad and they call that church hurt. But that usher's just doing their job, you know, so. But but at the same <clears> time, <throat> there's a way to do your job. And that's not Correct. to say that they may not, you know, Correct. You, you know, you don't know there. You yeah. know, they could have possibly said it. Yeah. Differently, yeah. but you again, you don't know what kind of day that they had. Yes. Um, you know, that's not giving liberty to what they did or how they did it. Yeah. But you gotta know why you're there. I remember we saw somebody had, had posted that, I think, um, not that long ago. You know, they said, I thank God that I know that this is my set place. Yeah. And I know the intent and the heart of my pastors. Right. And I did not I, and I'm not <laughs> taking what I just felt that somebody how they yes. just responded in the church the wrong way. Yeah. So so I think everybody's got to have that mindset. You can't take the attitude and the actions of everybody around you right. to get you out of your set place because the enemy comes to kill, yeah. steal, yeah. and destroy. And he will get you out of your set place from receiving what you need to receive to help you be the all that God has called yeah. you to be. No, and that's true. So, But people can feel judged. And mm -hmm. sometimes they are judged. Sometimes church, sometimes church leaders be. and church people handle it wrong. Sometimes they don't. And the people just took no, it wrong. I'm not Letting your trifling self get get me out of experience. Right. The but that's another topic that has. That's another me. topic. I'm sorry, <clears throat> I just get so dogmatic. It's another topic, on it. <laughs> but it's true. So yes. people can. There's judgmental attitudes that people yes. can experience and have. You know, another thing is people can feel like they're not getting the support they need. Yeah. They can feel like there's this lack of support. You know, meaning sometimes, man. <clears throat> excuse me. People are going through difficult times, times. and they feel like. People aren't supporting them. They feel you know? isolated. You, you know, know sometimes just... people, they, you know, they get sick and they feel like nobody checks on them. Yeah. Or, you know, I had somebody pass away and nobody came yeah. to see about me. And, you know, these are just <laughs> feelings, not right or wrong. This is just people feel this way. It's their experience. You know, um, you know, sometimes I know people feel like I have a need and so my church is supposed to meet it. Mm -hmm. And that's not always your church can't always meet that need. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a forty thousand dollar need, and my church needs it, but it doesn't negate that I, if I expect my church to help me, and they don't, no matter what it is, that can make me feel some type of way. Yeah. You know, especially if you're like, hey, I've been there for my church, I've done this, I've done that, and now that I need my church isn't helping me. And we're not saying right or wrong on the church helping. We're talking about the reality. I don't feel like I have the support that I need, so it causes me to feel rejected or mm -hmm. abandoned, and I'm walking around with hurt now. Yeah, <clears throat> and there's times that, you know, I think it's one thing if you understand the type of support um, that a church is able to provide and what they say they're able to provide and that they don't do it. Yes. And I, and I think you have to always make sure too, that you go back and you make sure that what you thought ha happened was that actually the reality, yeah. because many times what you thought happened and what, what actually happened or their understanding of it may not be the same. Yes. I think that's very, um, important. Be, um, because what does what's the scripture say that a man that um, that vents all his anger without yeah, a man that vents, vents all of his anger before knowing, all, knowing the all the facts is a fool is a fool. And <clears throat> sometimes what we think happened and what actually happened That's may true. not be the same. Exactly and, right. And 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 I I will say this. I know I've been guilty sometimes of causing church hurt. Somebody be hurt in yeah, the church. Yeah, me too. Yeah. And I remember. I remember one time I had um, told somebody that I would do something 
And um, I didn't do it. I'll be honest with you. I was going through some hurt myself, you know, with I think losing my grandmother at the time. But I told the person I would do it. Right. And I didn't do it. Right. And um, in the process, they ended up leaving the church, Mm -hmm. you know, not to blame, you know, and we got to be careful that we don't blame shift other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had to go and I had to apologize and ask for forgiveness because if I said I was going to do something, I should have did some, did it or at least reached out and said something, Yeah, you know, and you know, not that they actually ever came back, but at least I was glad that we were able to restore still that relationship to some degree because then when they did were in need later on, they were able to reach back out to us and we were able to be a support to them. Yeah, But um, it can happen for so many different reasons. You're right. It can for so many reasons where you can feel like you're not supported by your church. And again, some of this, it can be justified. Yeah. Some cannot be justified because you could have an expectation that you just think the church should meet and they they shouldn't meet. But you have hurt behind that. But you can also... The church, you know, should have done something and they didn't. Yeah. And you you feel, you know, not supported. So lack of support is a big reason, mm-hmm. you know, both good and bad. But it's it's a it's a real common reason. People don't feel they have the support yeah. of it. And while we're on that, for somebody that's like, that's me, I think you got to go back and, and look at your expectation, too. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to go back and look and go, hey, was this a, was this a justifiable expectation? You know, because maybe it was. Because that happens a lot, but maybe it wasn't. But I think that takes us to the next one. And, and <clears throat> expectation and what did you do to overcome this situation? Yes. yes. Because you never want something to overtake you, but you want to learn how to overtake that's it. That's so good. That yeah, is important. That's, that's good. That's very, very true. But that, you know, that leads us to, you know, there's a lot of times people get hurt by abuse of power of leadership. Mm, and that you happens know, a lot. It more does. Than people and think. people are justified in being yeah. hurt. There's a lot of church leaders. Coercion, coercion, yeah. abuse. They abuse power, their power, man. And it causes deep emotional wounds. I don't know how many people that we have had that come to our church because they uh, got hurt. Manipulation. Like, yeah, people yeah. abusing their power. Yes. There are a lot of people that come into the church because of being able to have a title, being able to take yeah. advantage of other people, which yes. is why one of the number one things I say when people just say, Oh, I feel I'm called to ministry, I'm called to be a pastor. Why? Why? Right. I need to know that. Right. Because depending upon your answer will let me know, you know, are you really, really called? Yeah, that's so true. Mm -hmm. So this abuse of power and you might be listening and you might have gotten hurt by a pastor, by an elder, a minister, a deacon, you know, a person in leadership. You might have gotten hurt by them and um, and it hurt you bad and you know we're, we're not there yet but there's hope there's ways to overcome that yeah you know and the reality is people, God always has a ram in the bush he does yeah he does and you know one of the things God told you and I when we started victory yeah that you know victory would be a place where he would send people in yes. who had gotten hurt by other churches and they were done with church mm-hmm. but they would he would get them to our church and they would see something different and go Hey, I'm willing to give this a try, Mm -hmm. but if this goes bad, I'm out. Yeah. And we've seen that again and again and again and again. And I will say this, just because a pastor or a church leader hurt you does not mean that is the totality of the church, Amen. that there are other pastors and leaders that won't abuse their power that Mm -hmm. aren't just trying to hurt people. That doesn't mean as a pastor, you won't unintentionally hurt people, but that's different than intentionally using your power to hurt people. Yeah, and that that is so key. And yeah. The difference between intentionally and unintentionally. That's why it's important to go and talk to somebody versus just assuming. Correct. Did they, you know, listen, this is how I felt. You know, we've even had sometimes people, you know, whether it's, you know, hey, I said hi to you. You didn't say hi back to me. Yeah. And they thought we were intentionally upset with them. Yes. And it was, it wasn't, it it wasn't wasn't intentional. It was, we it didn't doesn't even negate it hurt them. Yeah, it doesn't negate, and we still have to. We have a we responsibility have to, make it right. to address that yes. and still yes. apologize yes. because yes. it doesn't negate how they felt. And you right. want to deal with those feelings of how they felt. Listen, I never meant to hurt you. I didn't hear you. I apologize yeah. if yeah. you felt that way. But if they never go, the hurt will never be right. addressed, right. and they'll continue to be hurting. And as church leaders, we should never be above never. saying, "I'm sorry." Never. I'm sorry. I apologize. I asked for 
for your forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Even if I don't think I did something wrong, if my actions hurt you, then instead of trying to justify, at least acknowledge I hear you by saying, hey, I'm mm -hmm. sorry for what I did, how it made you feel. Yeah. I and, apologize. And I think, too, because sometimes we've even had leaders where they've done things that they shouldn't have done, whether in, in the midst of yeah. anger, because two rights don't make a wrong. That's Just true. Because, you know. I, it, this isn't Bible, but, but with great responsibility, was it? With, with great power comes great responsibility. Okay. <laughs> I know that's, that's Spider, Spider Man Spider Revelation. Spider Man Revelation. That's, that's the book degree, of Marvel, chapter to, one. But to some degree, <clears throat> there's truth to that. <laughs> that does not give you a right to go off on somebody, but no. you know. Um, but you can sometimes go off on somebody if they're going off on you. And we teach our leaders, you can't do that. That's right. You can't do that. That's right. And so if you do, you got to go apologize. Yeah. I got in trouble and, with and God we, oh, going yeah. off on somebody mm -hmm. that went off on me. They threatened me. Mm -hmm. They challenged me. And I'm not a punk. And so I... I said something back and you know and when when it the when they left out god jacked me up he was like now what was that go apologize and i'm yeah. like i didn't do anything he's like you're the pastor you're the you're the one in authority fix it or you're fired that's what god yeah. told me and so you know your point is real valid yeah. you know if the bible says if you're going to be great in the kingdom you got to be the greatest, be the servant. greatest servant and so that means i serve in example yeah. that if i hurt you whether i meant to or not especially if i didn't mean to it doesn't negate your hurting yeah. so i come and apologize and, but, we've, <clears throat> and we've also had other leaders when we found out what was the truth yes we either some we've had them go make restitution yeah. Yes. And we've yes. had some leaders we've had to sit down yes. as well if they did not take the appropriate actions Correct. to get it right Correct. as well. Yeah, that's right. That's mm -hmm. right. Because, yeah, that's right. So let's keep going. So this one, this next one I want to talk about is real, mm -hmm. real common. And that's conflict and division within church community. Yeah. You know, that you have, you know, you anytime you have groups of people together. There's mm -hmm. going to be potential for conflict, oh. potential for conflict. That's one of my prayers when I'm praying every day, when I'm praying for the church. I'm like, Lord Jesus, I come against any division, Yeah. any division that could try to come against And it happens ministry. again and again in churches. And we mm -hmm. see it here. Mm -hmm. We see it here. There's conflicts of people, whether it is you took my chair. My seat. Mm -hmm. That's not your seat, but people feel like I sit there or my parking spot mm -hmm. or this or that or you don't like me. I mean, just because and when you have a church our size that's large mm -hmm. and even bigger, you have greater amounts of people who don't even know each other and can say things, do things. I want to be a friend. You don't want to be my friend. You know, I want to hang out with you. I want to go to lunch with you. You don't want to go to lunch with me. All it types of stuff. It can lead to tense and stressful environments. Yes. And it can lead to hurt feelings and strained relationships. One of the things that people don't know, people know you, people that don't really know you don't know that you can be a really jokester. Yes. You can be very sarcastic. Yes. How dare you talk very about me that sarcastic. way? Very yes. sarcastic. I mean, some people are probably realizing a little bit from watching this podcast to some degree, but one of the things that I we've no even realized you you is that about? you have to be very mindful. I do. Even, um, especially the more we've grown, the way more we've grown yeah. and being sarcastic around people that don't know yes. you because even though you're being joking and, and, and not you're not not serious about it yes. some people that don't know you can take what you have to say they seriously do. and be offended they by do. it which could cause church hurt yes you weren't i didn't see you in church this week they're like oh my god bishop he's mad at me yeah or well, you're not upset. sitting on the front row or like and i'm just joking but so you're right i've had to more and more is try to stay aware of not saying those things and doing those things because people don't and know how to not take that, it. It's not that they should get a life. Right. No. No. It falls back on us right. of, of us trying to be more mindful too. As Strike well. that. Get a life. But no, that's right. You're right. <laughs> You're right. It's 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 right. Yeah. So, but conflict and division. And so, you know, mm -hmm. pastors think I want to grow. I want a big church. They don't understand what it means to have a big church because it's not all bells and whistles. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of challenges when a church starts expanding and you have more and more people that are that are part but of it. But I think it. it goes back to expecting it as well. If if you expect yes. as you know, especially if you're in your set place, 
you got to expect some conflict. You do. Which you is do. why you can't allow conflict to get you away from where God yes. has you. I can't All that live a godly life shall suffer, suffer persecution. persecution from getting what God has yeah, for you so you yeah. can be who God has called you to yeah. be. Yeah. Another one real quick, because um, we got to try to address, you know, how do you address it? But legalism. You know, where churches mm -hmm. have these strict legalistic rules and regulations, man, you, you know, women can't wear this. Men have to wear this. Or I've seen this because I grew up in church. You know, somebody gets pregnant outside of wedlock and mm -hmm. now they're judged. They're called up on a platform mm -hmm. and they got to repent. But, you know, they're not the only one that sin, mm -hmm. but they're the legalistic stuff puts a lot of hurt on people. Mm -hmm. You know, legalistic says you it's do this, do that. Mm -hmm. Don't do this, don't do that. And it causes a lot of guilt and shame. People feel inadequate. And there's people walking around hindered in their walk with God because a church that so-called represented God misrepresented him. Mm -hmm. And so there's this legalism that has really caused a lot of hurt mm -hmm. in people. And I've seen it again. Because people like that, and again. that's how church is. And I don't want right. to go back to Why church. Why do I want to be there? Versus finding a church that, you know. But I think the tough know, thing is. Making if, sure it's, yeah. you know, because, you know, there's some things that, you know, uh, with some churches, it's like you, you don't want to be so too far to the right that you're yeah. trying to find, you know, just to be able to sin. Right. But, you know, some things may not be like, OK, like I, I like I like to wear pants in some churches. Women do not wear, wear pants wear in pants, the church. You yeah. know, stuff but like is that. It is it sin? You right. know, I mean, there what are they try some to, churches that make they try to back sin. it up with Bible yeah. and certain dispensations and all that. But the, I think you and I have always said this, you know, and you just kind of hinted on it, you know, you know, People act out in your supermarket, but you still go back there. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a bad encounter with that or at the bank or at the movie theater. Why? Why? Because it has what you need. Right. That's your good. Your church has what you and need. And so you so can't you let go back one there. You can't allow people you that are in away. that yeah. store shopping yeah. stop you from getting what yeah. you need. But legalism has hurt and continues to hurt a lot of people. And then hypocrisy. Mm. Hypocrisy, man. Double standards. You know, where you know you have a church leadership. They're telling you, do this, do that. And there you find out they're not doing it. You tell me to tithe and you're not tithing. Mm. Or talk about living right and you're not living right. Or stepping off. All, you know, all. <laughs> All types of crazy things, but hypocrisy causes me to be disappointed, rejected, to feel lied to, all types of stuff. And it causes hurt that makes it hard for people to we, recover. We talk from. about that sometimes even with parents. Parents need to be mindful. Yeah. How can you expect your children to live a yeah. certain way if right. you're not doing it? That's so true. That's so true. And so, you know, those are different areas of church hurt. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the people, and there's more, we just kind of put some stuff yeah. out there, but real quick, let's just talk about some ways that, you know, people can get healed because mm -hmm. it, you can get healed from church hurt. You and I have had church hurt. Mm -hmm. You can get healed mm -hmm. from church hurt. And so there's different ways to do that. You know, um, you know, let's, so let's talk about that. What are some ways that people can have, can experience, you know, get healed from church? Well, hurt? we talked, we talked a little bit about it briefly, but one thing is like open communication, encouraging, open and honest yeah, communication yeah. to help make sure you address any misunderstandings and any conflicts. You got to be willing to share. Make assumptions. Yes. But like we said before, for anybody that what is it i just lost it again <laughs> who uh vents all their anger a person that but, vents all their anger right, before they know right, all the facts they is, know, a fool. is a fool so don't go talking to other people but go to the source and yes. say hey this is what i thought this is what i expected is that correct yeah. or this is what i'm upset about so that you can work it out because the bible talks about forgiveness yes the bible talks about reconciliation and you can't do that unless you have open communication if you're not willing to talk you're part of the problem and again the enemy comes the to kill, steal, and yeah, destroy. Yeah. Don't allow him to steal what God wants you to get so that well, where you can God be victorious and you. where he has placed yeah. you. So you need open communication. So you got to be able to talk. Yes. You got it now. Sometimes people try to talk and they won't, they won't, somebody won't talk to them. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some churches where they're like, you don't, you don't question the pastor and all that yeah. stuff. And that's a whole different thing. Well, I will say this then, if that's the case, you don't allow that to stop you from going to church, period. Correct. Then you find another church Correct. where it, that is open communication is good, yeah. where you can still learn the word of God. Right. And uh, cause just, just. 
there's there are good churches there out are. there just because you have some bad you may have one or two bad churches out there doesn't right. mean that there's no good churches right so you don't allow that to stop you from getting what god has and you know the you. bible talks about the process of going you know, uh -huh. the bible talks about if you have a problem with your brother go to him personally mm -hmm. try to work it out if it's not received then bring one or two unbiased witnesses mm -hmm. to try to work it out and then if it's not received bring it before the church but leadership i know i'm telling you straight up probably there's a lot of people that feel like they probably go through that process and yeah. it is not resolved yes then if that's the place then go somewhere else yes. but don't allow that don't to throw stop the baby you. out don't with throw the, the bath baby water. out with the bath water yeah. then you go and you go somewhere else to get what you know that you need yeah according to the word of god because the word yeah. of god is your ultimate authority yes so that you yes. can be all god has called let's kind of just a couple of these uh, you know also sometimes man you've been hurt so bad you need counseling mm -hmm. right you need counseling you need support so sometimes man you gotta you gotta you know you gotta get counseling sometimes you got hurt intimately deeply mm -hmm. and you know you you got to turn around and just you got to be able to talk with somebody mm -hmm. and have somebody help walk you through right mm -hmm. what you're you know how you're feeling because if you don't talk you stay stuck yeah so sometimes you, you know you got to do that well and counseling is good because counseling will also help you it's almost like uh, another thing that we wanted to bring up was it so can also be a form of accountability right to make sure yes. that you yes. do what you know to do regardless of how you feel yes and it's going to make sure that you take the necessary steps that you should take even if you don't feel like taking that's so good most of the time when you're hurt by church by, by somebody yeah. or you hurt by the church the you don't last feel thing like, you want to do you don't feel like doing yes. it but if you have counseling or you have accountability it's going to help you to take the steps that yes. you need to take even when you don't feel like i think it. that's good you know when you when you're hurt by by your brother your sister in christ anybody you got to have accountability yes especially if it's deep hurt you you might need counseling mm -hmm. But you got to have somebody holding you accountable because yes. your flesh will go, I'm not doing that. I don't want to do it. You know, and all those type of things. Your flesh but don't feel like doing half doing the stuff nothing. it's supposed to do. Yeah, doing nothing. <laughs> That's why accountability is so good. It and is. the Bible says there's safety in the multitude of counsel. Yes, yes. And then the last thing real quick is, there. you know, there there has to be this, this you know, emphasis on love, man. And grace. Yeah, grace and love. We all grace, need grace. We all need grace. We all we need all, mercy. Because we got to recognize we all make mistakes. We all mess up. I mean, we've you all know, fallen God says short. that he'll be perfecting us until the yes. day that Jesus Christ returns. Yes. I think we 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 hold everybody else to this higher standard right. that we're not even willing to hold ourselves right. to. Give right. people grace. Give people mercy. Yes. You and know? it needs to be top down and bottom up. Yeah. So church leadership need to give lay people grace and mercy and lay people need to give leadership grace and mercy. That's why the Bible says forgive how many times? Initially, seventy times seven. Seventy times seven. I mean, but it and it, and it's it's not even putting a numerical. No, it's, it's really just, talking about the principle. Yeah, of we need yes. to walk in love and grace and mercy. You know, do unto others what you want them to do unto you. Treat others how you want to be treated. Because that's what's going to promote healing. That's what's yes. going to promote reconciliation. Yes. you know, and it's what keeps the enemy out. And it's, the Bible talks about it again down. and again. God says, "Forsake not the assemblings of ourselves together for the purpose of edifying one yes. another." We can't edify one another if That's we're right. at, at war with one another. That's right. And God even tells us, love your enemies. Yes. Love your enemies. And you know what I was thinking about? Because the enemy's on this whole thing with love. The enemy, one of his main, greatest, most effective tactics is fear. Mm -hmm. So when I got hurt, there's this fear of getting hurt again. There's this fear of they're trying to take advantage. There's this fear. But the Bible says perfect love cast out fear mm -hmm. so this whole f love that you're talking about and grace it's necessary to kick the devil mm -hmm. out to yeah. shut him down because the enemy demonic encroachment can't stay where love is manifesting yeah. and love is taking over because it it casts that demonic stuff out so we as a church family top down bottom up we got to have this love attitude and mentality but if we understand the purpose of the church the purpose of relationships yeah, too, yeah. then we will go after it even when it hurts Amen. us. That's so Because good. there's purpose in it. That's so good. This you has know, been And knowing really, that the really enemy good. will try to come against purpose. Right. 100%. So we've got to remember why we're doing what we're doing. That's right. Knowing that the enemy will come to try yeah. to stop it and kill it. And remember this. The Bible says, God says, if it's easy to love people that aren't lovable, that mm -hmm. are lovable. It's another for people that aren't lovable. And God says, if you don't love your brother, 
You can't say you, you love gotta me. You got to fight for what God has for you. You have to fight for what God has for That's you. That's right. So this has been really good. We're out of time, man. This has been, this is good. You could talk about this more and more and more, yes, but could. we just wanted to touch on it because church hurt is real. Yes. The different reasons we gave are part of many others that we could give and, but how to, how to overcome it. I think that was important too, because if you're hearing this and you've been on the receiving end of church hurt, or you know, yes. somebody, this will, this will just be a model, you know, and, I and a resource this, to help you. If you, if you left your old church and you did not take the steps to reconcile, yes. to forgive, go back, go back and do it. And if you tried and they didn't, and you stepped away from church, find another right. church. Right. Why? Because there's purpose in the church. Bible says, forsake not the assembling of ourselves together for the purpose of edifying yeah. one another. And that's how we work stuff out of us. We work our potential right. so that we can discover who God has called us to be so that we can do what you God has called us pastor. to You must have a good pastor. I got to meet yes, your pastor. <laughs> but no, but that, that's right. And remember, yes. don't allow the trifology of others Amen. to cause it's your tripe side to come out. It's not worth it. No, no. Because you're going to just get hurt in the process. Yeah, and, and Why? Let, because hurt people hurt people. Yeah, but healed people. Heal people. We're going to end on that. Yes. This has been fantastic. It's yes, been really, it really good. Listen, would you subscribe if you yes. haven't already? Because I think you agree. This this type of information, everybody needs to hear. Everybody. So subscribe so you you know when we're dropping new content. But also, as Pastor Aisha always says, like and share. Get the word mm -hmm. out. Expose other people to what you've been exposed to so that we can help more and more people, man, have victory in, in their everyday life. life. Mm -hmm. Well, we love y'all so much, man. Love this has you. been good. Stay tuned for more stuff coming your way Amen. and we'll see you next time on the what victory, victory experience, experience.